We're going to use the chain rule to find the derivatives of three composite functions involving sine. I'll leave links in the description to similar lessons I've done with other trig functions. We will, of course, need the chain rule, which I have provided here, the derivative of f of g of x is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So let's begin with the first problem. We want to find the derivative of sine of theta cubed. Now to apply the chain rule, we need to identify our outside function, our f, and our inside function, our g. In this case, the outside function is sine, and what's inside the sine is theta cubed. So when we begin with f prime, that's the derivative of the outside function, the derivative of sine, which is cosine. And what goes in the cosine is just g of x, the inside function. The inside function is theta cubed. So we have cosine of theta cubed, and then we just multiply by g prime the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is theta cubed. The derivative then is three theta squared. And there's our derivative, f prime of g multiplied by g prime. That's all there is to it. Let's move on to the second problem, the derivative of sine of three theta. This is very similar to the previous problem. The outside function is sine. So the f prime the derivative of the outside function will be cosine. And then again, what we put in the f prime is g of x. We just put the inside function in there. And so that's three theta. So we put three theta inside the f prime. And then we just multiply by g prime, the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is of course three theta and its derivative is three. So there is our derivative. Finally, the derivative of sine cubed of theta. This one's a little different because the outside function is not sine. The outside function is a thing cubed. And then the inside function, the thing being cubed, is sine theta. So when we take f prime here, that's like taking the derivative of x cubed, because again, the outside function, the f, is a thing cubed. So our derivative, our f prime, is going to be three, we're applying the power rule, so we bring that power down as a factor, three multiplied by the thing that was getting cubed, and then we have to reduce that power of three by one, so it becomes a power of two. And then the thing that was being cubed goes in here. This is the g, the inside function, which in this case is sine theta. Just like if we took the derivative of x cubed, we would have 3x squared. It's just that the x, in this case, is sine theta. Finally, to finish up the chain rule, we have to multiply by g prime. That's the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is sine, and so its derivative is going to be cosine of theta, of course. And that's the derivative of sine cubed of theta. Let's do one bonus exercise for the road. This one's a little harder. We have to use the chain rule multiple times. To start, this problem is similar to the previous one because the outermost function is a thing cubed. So we begin with three times the inside function, the thing that was being cubed, and the thing that was being cubed was sine of ln of cosine theta. So I'll just pop that inside here. It's three times that inside function squared because we have to reduce the power by one. Then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Now with this guy, the outermost function is sine. So we begin with that f prime, the derivative of that outside function. That's gonna be cosine and then leave the inside unchanged. The inside is the natural log of cosine of theta. So we'll just put that inside of the cosine. And then again, we need to multiply by the derivative of this inside function, the natural log of cosine theta. Now, in the context of natural log of cosine theta, the outside function is natural log, and the derivative of natural log is one divided by the input, which in this case is cosine theta, 
and then multiplied by the derivative of that inside function. The derivative of cosine theta is negative sine theta. And there you go. As you can see, it is a chain of derivatives when applying the chain rule to an even more complicated composite function. The derivative of the outermost function, which was a thing cubed, then the derivative of the next layer, which was sine, and then the derivative of the next layer, the natural log, and then the derivative of the innermost function, which in this case was the cosine, and its derivative gave us this minus sign. I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or video requests, and check out my Calculus One exercises playlist in the description for more.